while I'm checking on stuff, if you're just joining me, check out today's uh, trivia question. Or, well, it's not really trivia, but how can you tell if your hanging basket has enough water? Or really any plot for that matter. So, let's think about that and give me some ideas over in the chat. Patty says she just bought another one. Uh, the only thing I got this year was a fern, but I might add some more hanging baskets in later. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking about one on the front porch. I have, I have kind of a wind chime that's starting to look kind of eh, not too great, so I might replace it with a hanging basket. You know, I just noticed when I pulled up the live feed here on my phone that if you have it in this view, where I put the question gets obscured by Facebook's little live logo thing, so I'm going to have to rethink where I have that. <laughs> in fact, let's go ahead and fix it right now. What you don't see is me moving stuff around before the show starts. There we go. That'll work for today. So Yeah, so the question is, if you have a hanging basket or a pot or anything for that matter, how do you tell if it has enough water? the hanging part of it on the deck. Um, the smaller plastic hanging baskets that we have, they're they're kind of tricky to get loose, but you can kind of push down and then pop out the little hook and then it pulls off. So I do that and then I store them. And that way I can either use it as a pot or as a hanging basket. It gives me options if I want to reuse the pot. Uh, also, at our store locations, we can take those back and recycle them for you. So, at the end of the season, if you want to recycle your plastic hanging baskets, you can bring those back. We send them off to the company that we get them from and recycle them. Alrighty, well, looks like we have a few people that's joined us. Let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode of Bob's Live. to this week's episode of Bob's Live, our weekly show right here on the internet. And well, it's usually Tuesdays at 5 p.m. We're running a little bit late this week, mainly because I forgot to, uh, to make an adjustment before I started. So I had to go do some stuff in the background and that pushed me back a little bit. So 
I uh, bumped it back about 30 minutes. So, yeah, if if you ever look for the show Tuesday at 5 and I haven't put up some sort of announcement, it's usually that I'm running a little bit behind. Uh, but, hey, that's what notifications are for. So, hopefully you got notifications. Um the easiest way to do that is to give us a follow. So over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So on Facebook and YouTube, you can like our page on Facebook and you'll get notifications when we go live. Or if you subscribe to us over on YouTube, you also get a notification whenever we go live with each week's show. And, uh, Greg is saying test. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Greg. <laughs> yep, you're, um, uh, yeah, it's working. <laughs> um, anyhow, along with, uh, those social media channels, we're also now on TikTok. And uh, just yesterday, I uploaded a TikTok video that's kind of a summary of a video that we did last week, or, well, week before last now. So I thought we would take a look at it and kind of give you an idea of what you can expect to see on our TikTok account. So our TikTok channel, it is the same uh, at Bob's Market. So you can give us a follow over there. <laughs> so I, I had to smile i saw greg's comment uh we old no tiktok <laughs> yeah i i am at the upper end of the uh age group on tiktok i guess <laughs> i'm starting to to feel that too <laughs> so uh yeah you can check out our TikTok little one minute videos. For me, it's a challenge because I usually start off like today's video that we're going to see a little bit later. I have probably 40 minutes of footage. I condensed that down to six minutes. On TikTok, you only have one minute. So I have to really figure out with my other thing. Uh, but it is helping me become a better video editor. So I guess that's the upside to it. Um, well, as I alluded to with the question before the stream started, um, this week I wanted to talk about hanging baskets. And it goes along with our blog post. So, um, each week I post a blog post over on our website. And uh, this, this past Friday, we did hanging basket care tips. And something that I've done is I've sort of reversed the way that I'm doing Bob's Live in the blog. So it used to be I would lead with Bob's Live, and then the blog post will kind of be the follow-up to it later in the week. So I've decided to reverse that now. So I'm doing the blog post, and then Bob's Live is sort of the follow-up. So they'll always be sort of loosely related on the same topic. So this week, we're talking about hanging baskets. And it's the perfect time of year. We're starting to get into hot weather. And now is the time that if you have hanging baskets, you really need to start keeping an eye on them and taking care of them because as it gets warmer out, the chances of something going wrong 
get higher. Um, really not something going wrong. It's just sort of the common pitfalls that people fall into with, with hanging baskets. And a lot of it, it's no surprise that it revolves around watering and maintenance. So here at Bob's, we grow around 100,000 hanging baskets a year. So that's counting, well, ferns alone is around 50,000 baskets. And then another 50 to 60 plus, I think this year we did up around 80,000 other hanging baskets. Um, on top of that, so yeah, that's a lot of hanging baskets. Um, so in the blog post, and let me jump over to Edge here so I can scroll around and point at stuff with my mouse. <laughs> um, I talk about some of the few basic kind of care tips. Um, one of the things is lighting. So depending on where you're placing your hanging basket, you want to consider what type of plant you're putting where. You don't want to put, say, impatiens out in bright sunlight. They're a shade plant, so they're happy like on a porch in the shade. And uh, something like petunias, they love sunlight. They need to go out in the sun. Um, so when you're purchasing your hanging basket, if you're not sure what type of lighting it needs, um, make sure to talk to somebody in our stores. Um, they're very knowledgeable about what type of light the plants can take. Um, sometimes people buy a plant and be like, hey, where do I need to put this? A better way to approach it is I have this particular area where I want to put a plant. Look at the lighting conditions there and then buy a plant based off that. So instead of buying based off of, oh, this looks beautiful, I'm going to put it here where it won't have enough light, um, you know, you kind of need to think of it as to what the plant needs. Um, the next important thing is water. And really, I wrote like two paragraphs here about water because it is by far the most important thing when it comes to hanging basket and it can be tricky um, hanging baskets are really easy to both overwater and also underwater uh, but more on the underwater side because something can happen with them that can kind of trick you into thinking that you've watered it properly when really you haven't. And that is that the root ball can dry out. And when that happens, whenever you water it, the water just kind of runs around the outside of it and comes out the drain hole at the bottom. And you think, hey, I've watered it enough. There's water coming out of the bottom. It's perfect. When really you've just poured all the water around the outside of the root ball and you haven't really got the actual plant itself wet. Um, that's the most common mistake that we see when folks come in with dried out plants. Um, an easy way to check for that is to simply lift up on the pot. Um, when you bring the pot home day one, kind of lift it, get a feel for how heavy it is, and every time you water it, give it a little lift, to see, you know, kind of keep a running tally in your head of, hey, this feels the same, or this feels a little bit lighter than it should. And that's really the easiest way to check. Um, something that I forgot to mention with lighting up here, I'm kind of getting out of, <laughs> out of order now, but with lighting is also rotating the plant. So on my front porch, I have a big fern um, it's a hanging basket, but I actually have it in a planter, like in a nice plant stand. And if I don't rotate it at least once a week, it'll start to grow lopsided on me because it'll want to start to grow toward the light. So I have to constantly rotate it. Um, and then the last thing is fertilizing. With a hanging basket, when you're watering it, 
the good rule of thumb is to water it until water starts to come out the drain hole. If you're watering with fertilizer once and then you're going back with just regular water after that and you're watering until it's running out the drain hole, you're rinsing out all of those nutrients that you put in the last time you fertilized. So it's a good rule of thumb with hanging baskets to fertilize them every time you water. And that ensures that, you know, you're not losing that fertilizer. Um, so when it comes to, to water, and let me get rid of that screen <laughs> and jump back to the camera here. Um, when it comes to watering and this whole aspect of hanging baskets kind of tricking you, I thought I would set up a demonstration today. So back, oh, it was sometime in the winter, um, we did a Bob's Live where I planted some uh, ZZ plants that, that I propagated. And I would pick them up and show you, but with the green screen behind me, they would be invisible. <laughs> um, anyhow, I have these propagated ZZ plants that I'm in the process of rooting in the soil. And I kind of intentionally let them dry out over the weekend. So the soil is nice and dry. And I happened to plant these in the exact same mix that we use for our hanging baskets. So it's the perfect example of what will happen if you let a hanging basket dry out and then water it. So let me switch over to that camera. And there we can see the two little twiggies right here. And right here, there are the stalks of the ZZ plants. Um, I assure you, they do look great. Um, let me see if I can sort of, oh, there we go, off camera, right off at the edge there, you can sort of see the growth. Um, ZZ plants are extremely slow growers, so it's going to take these a while before they start putting off new shoots, and, you know, that's, that's just sort of part of the process of propagating them. Um, but anyhow, I have this camera set up, and this soil is extremely dry. So I thought I would show you what happens when I water it. So let me bend over here and grab my watering can. And you can see there how the water just sort of pools up on top, on top of the plant. And if I continue to water... Eventually, the water is just going to run over off to the edge. So it's running kind of over here and right around here to the edge. And then it's running down along the side of the root ball. So it's not really soaking in. So if you have a hanging basket that's dried out like this, one of the easiest ways to sort of revive it is to fill up a bucket of water and submerge the entire hanging basket in the bucket of water. That'll rehydrate the entire root ball um, and really get water back into the soil. Now with this, you'll notice I put a little bit of water on it and then I sat and waited and eventually, yeah, it did soak down in. So another thing is if you're watering with a watering can or a sprayer, um, don't just hit it and watch it until water starts to come out the bottom and then leave. Um, kind of give it a pre-water. So I hit this with a little bit of water. Now that the top of this is wet, if I put water on it again, you'll notice it soaks in a lot faster. So now the water is being absorbed down in a lot faster where that top layer has been moistened. So now it's a lot easier to water. And you'll notice I'm going slow. I'm kind of taking my time. I'm not pouring it on. If I did that, it would just run right around it and it wouldn't get soaked in. So yeah, that's one of the most common mistakes that, that I see with, with hanging baskets. Um, 
hopefully I didn't overfill this. Let me feel down in the drain hole there. This has a pan under it to catch any excess, but I have overrun a few here in my office before. <laughs> so yeah, with watering, um, that is one of the most important aspects. And again, it's one of the easiest things to overlook, especially, you know, this is a good example because it's easy to see the soil. But if you're looking at something like a Boston fern, you know, you can, you can kind of part your way down in and dig down into it. And, you know, you can, you can kind of comb your way down in there and still not be able to see the soil because it's just so dense. So with this, we can actually see what's going on, but with another type of hanging basket, you might not be able to see that. Um, so yeah, that's some quick hanging basket care tips. Um, if you want to check out the whole article, again, head over to our website at bobsmarket.com and you can see the, uh, the article there. And uh, yeah, down at the bottom of the screen there, that is a panoramic shot of our newest greenhouse. And that was all baskets that we did this year. Uh, so, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs>
and that's because later on I plan on planting a tree back on that back side so let me go ahead and start broadcasting these seeds I'm going to put these right along the edge because they are annuals so these most of them won't come back however it did look like on the packs that there were some perennials mixed in there even though they had labeled as an annual mix so I don't know I'll find out So with spreading this seed, I'm mostly letting the breeze do the work. Or throwing it up in the air and letting it carry it. Watch what you're doing. You can be pretty accurate doing this. Alright, so have a little bit of seed left and I'm going to save that for another planting project that I have so we'll pop this into a Ziploc baggie and label it. As with the previous bag I'm only going to use maybe half to two-thirds of this bag on this area because I'm going to save this for another planting project that I have over on the far side of the meadow garden. Also, if some of this doesn't come up, I'll have some reserve seed that I can go back and re-sow with. Alright, so that is this wildflower garden planted. All that I need to do now is just pack down the seed. And probably the easiest way for me to do it is with my feet. So, here we go. Alright, so... Yeah, that is how my meadow garden is coming along. And actually, I recorded that video. <laughs> You'll have noticed that I was wearing the same clothes that I had on in the TikTok video. And that's because I recorded like three or four weeks worth of videos all in one day. And uh, well, <laughs> um, that was about... Uh, it's been about three to four weeks ago, so almost a month ago, uh, when I planted those wildflowers. And they are starting to come in really beautifully. Um, we've got uh, probably 
a good inch to two inch tall wildflowers coming in now. And um, over in the section that we uh, that we planted uh, in last week's video, um, the morning glories are starting to come in really nice. So here in a few weeks, I'll probably walk through and show you all of the little projects that we've done so far this spring and how they're coming along. Um, I was noticing just this week that the impatience that we planted early on this spring, they're starting to look just beautiful. So yeah, we'll check back in on that. Um, when it comes to the meadow garden, um, some of my inspiration that I get for it is from books. And if you're planning a landscape or a large scale project like that, um, you know, it's, it's a journey. It's going to take multiple years to build out this meadow garden. Um, so I'm looking for the, the view here. Um, I had to go dig around in my bookshelf. <laughs> um, but this is one of the books that I'm using. Um, this is uh, Planting in a Post-Wild World is the title of this book. And it is a great reference if you're, if you're designing a meadow garden. So, you know, it's just full of different ideas. Um, some different planting guides for planting, uh, you know, the layering. So as I said, you know, I'm kind of letting the meadow garden do its own thing. Um, kind of the seasonal changes they talk about in here. Um, but yeah, it is, this is a great reference. Um, I've got a couple other books on sort of meadow gardens and wild wild landscape planning um, that are really great references. Uh, this just happened to be the only book that I had here in the office. And uh, yeah, there's a pile of boxes there in the background. <laughs> Um, uh, let me, uh, uh, oh yeah. So, um, I'm looking at comments. So I've got comments coming in from both, um, uh, both Facebook and YouTube. So a carpenter, um, over on YouTube says, Hey, I love watching. I'm a plant nerd too. I worked at a garden center for many years. And one thing a lot of people don't know about is deadheading. Maybe a topic for another show. And yeah, it would be a great topic to talk about. Um, in fact, I was going to mention something that I saw today when I was on my way back from lunch. Um, I went over to Pomeroy for lunch today and they've got their town baskets out. So beautiful petunia baskets this year and as they've got some petunias and calabricoas in them and you can always spot a gardener <laughs> there was a person standing waiting on the traffic light to change and they were standing there at the crosswalk and there was a petunia basket right there at the crosswalk and what's this person doing they're standing there deadheading the city's petunia baskets <laughs> <laughs> which that particular variety, they're a self-cleaning variety. Um, most newer petunias and callies are, but they do look a lot better if you go through and deadhead them. <laughs> but it just cracked me up to see that, you know, just, you know, regular person standing there. Um, they were leaving the, the coffee shop in Pomeroy, so they had a cup of coffee in one hand there deadheading the petunia with another so um yeah that that just cheered me up today <laughs> so yeah that's that's a good topic and it's something that um i might look into doing a blog post about and uh doing a video about so yeah um definitely look for that coming up um, I always love getting suggestions like this because at this point I've been writing our blog for 10 years and um, I know I've covered deadheading before in the past 
And a lot of times, I kind of fall into the trap of, well, I've already talked about that before. When, yeah, I talked about it before, but it was like a decade ago. So that's something that we need to pull to the front and talk about again. So uh, we're getting to that time of year. So like marigolds, and I'm starting to say so a lot, and <laughs> petunias, um, zinnias, different plants like that. They do benefit from deadheading and the um, occasional trim. And yeah, Patty's saying rose bushes. So rose bushes, you know, deadheading those and promoting more growth. Um, a lot of times there's deadheading where you're snapping off a spent bloom. And then there's also trimming off of, of spent blooms. Uh, so petunias is one of those things that kind of benefit from the occasional trim. So midsummer, when they start to get really long, you can kind of trim them back. That'll promote them to get more bushy and kind of put on a second blast of color toward the fall. Um, so yeah, that's something we'll definitely take a look at. And um, well, that is all that I have for this week. And uh yeah, I've been talking now for about 30 minutes, so, <laughs> well, until next time, keep growing. And I'm back again. So, yeah. Um, go ahead, give us a like if you're on Facebook or follow our page. And if you're over on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. Uh, that way you can get a notification whenever we go live. And um, right in here, I'm going to put a button to subscribe. And over here will be another video so yeah okay bye um okay